Hello guys and welcome yourselves back to the Thorncraft tutorial series with me Bashful Brit. The series where I take you from the basic knowledge of Thorncraft all the way up to Master Thaumaturge. That is what we do in this episode. Um, that's what we aim to do anyway. We are slowly progressing with it but we will get there in the end. Um, I'm looking at maybe doing a couple more episodes of these. Whoops, hang on. Right, not going to get into infusion. Which one do we need? Um, I don't know if we researched it or not. No, we placed it in here. Infernal Furnace. This is the one that we are going to cover last time. We're going to leave that stuff in there for this time. And we're going to go over the Infernal Furnace in this episode. But I'm going to plan on doing maybe a couple more episodes of these every now and then. Just so we, we can push through it a little bit faster. Um, because I don't feel like we're gonna there's a lot to cover in this mod and I don't think we're gonna cover it in any time soon. I mean it'll be on like Thorncraft four point seven or something by the time we end up finishing the series. So I might do a couple more episodes, push a couple more out and just try and help you guys out as much as possible. But we're gonna jump into the Infernal Furnace today. Once again, as usual, I will go and do this off of camera. I will then cut back, transition, beautiful transition in, and then show you what it looks like when I've finished a little hex puzzle. And then we will go into making it and I will tell you what exactly what it does. So I will see you guys on the other side. And there you have it guys. That one was a little bit tricky. Um, I'm not very awake, so <laughs> <laughs> it might have been a little, it's probably, I guess it's probably an easier way to do it than this, but this is my way and my way is not the right way. Da -da, we should know this by now. <laughs> um, so, Oram has air in it and then I just tried to link that up to fire. I know that obviously Lux has fire and air in it, so I just did a little thingy majig up to there and then I linked um, Fabrico and Metallum together. And I know this one was a bit, this is the tricky bit. Um, I had to go this way with it. I went to, um, I went Humanus and then we went to Beaster. And then that went to Life. Life has Earth in it, which linked to that. And then I just went straight to um, Metallum and then Metallum sort of went to Vitreous, is it? Yeah, Vitreous, and then that went to Ordo, and then just needed Potentia to link Ordo and Fire together. So that wasn't too bad, it took me a little while to figure it out, but we got there in the end. And now we have the Infernal Furnace. Oh, look at all these flashing things that we get to play with soon. Oh, hi. Oh, I can't wait to get into all of these. Right, so, Infernal Furnace. By harnessing raw ignis within a furnace crafted from obsidian and nether brick, you have created a highly efficient and fuel free furnace. So efficient, in fact, that it occasionally will produce bonus materials in the form of nuggets or other items. While this is essentially free, it is also very slow unless the furnace gets a new supply of ignis essentia every now and then. This can be done by placing a jar of ignis essentia within line of sight within line of sight of the front of the furnace somewhere within 10 blocks lucky a little essentia goes a long way it should also be noted the occasional bit of flux escapes into the environment items you wish to smelt need to be dropped into the top of the furnace and will be spit out the front so this is quite a fun little thing to do it's a multi-block structure um, and it looks pretty awesome when it's all done and finished so what we're going to need for that is nether brick also, my typing skills are not on key today, it would seem. Uh, we're going to need some obsidian. Ta da! And then we're going to need lava. Grab ourselves a buck. And then finally, we're going to need some iron bar. Doop. There we are. I was going to say, where's the lava? So, there's that. Um, and let's see how we need to be laying this one out. So we do like a cross of obsidian, nether brick there. This is all done in layers, by the way. If there's ever like 
like here's an empty space you can hover over each thing it'll tell you what everything is so that's quite nifty on that part but we're going to do a little cross out of obsidian like a so and then we're going to come up like this with this one and then we're going to put some more obsidian here and we're going to do a little obsidian thing here again Okay, I'm so used to feed the beast monster because I'm so used to flying everywhere. <laughs> um, so there's that, and then we pop that one in there, and then we just need to drop a source of lava in the middle. There we go, and that one is that one sorted. So we've got a capacity of 50 on this wand, and we need 50 terror and 50 ignis. So let's grab ourselves some nodes. So yeah, this is quite a nifty little one. Uh, when it comes to throwing craft, kill you. And there's a bit of ignis in that one, so we'll take that. And we'll kill it. But yeah, when it comes to Thorncraft 4.2, if you haven't seen the... Um, showcase for it by the actual mod developer Anza I think it's Anza or Anza or something like that but if you haven't seen it go and watch it as looks so cool there's like special ways you can fuel this furnace uh, different ways you can fuel this furnace even when the new um, update comes out I'm really really looking forward to that one so there we go um, so yeah in the book here it'll tell us 50 ignis 50 fire to get this thing going We've also got arcane bellows, which can connect up to these things. Um, so yeah, if we go like that, go like that, and it'll change into a multi-block structure when we hit it with the wand. Anything we now want to smelt just gets dropped in the front. So if we go grab ourselves a little bit of iron. This thing is going to be quite slow as well, by the way. So we're just going to chuck everything in the top there. There you go, chuck 32 in. There you are, and now we start spitting it out at us. Let's get rid of that, just so you can see. There you are, and it will start spitting bits and pieces out for you. Uh, if you combine this with, say, you can like automate this like properly if you had like, say, um, an alchemical furnace thing there stood up and you had some golems running the sentia, uh, you could also set up um a crucible and i think you can feed things into that i'm not 100 percent sure this is all just going off like theory by the way but where you can um break down all of our ores uh into clusters and then clusters will give you twice as much so what you can do is you can have golems fueling uh, this to give us clusters and then you can all output the clusters into this somehow and you have like hoppers down here collecting it up uh, So you could automate you could pretty much do automated or doubling with Thorncraft alone So it's just sort of goes to show you the extent of how powerful this mod can actually be I mean you don't even have to use like I'm going to show you this one little thing. That's actually Right He's going to be spitting stuff out. We've got another 32 that we can use. Um, so this is actually going to be quite a short episode otherwise. So we're going to come over to Golomancy. And see here we're going to look at the hungry chest. So we're going to need three void. This is not a um, piece of paper one. It's not like a script. Um, you don't need any paper. You don't need ink sacks. But you do however need the three fine. Uh, three fames on this one and the three vo uh, vacos so we're gonna have to go and get some of that uh, so we're gonna have to make some of that and make some of that so we need to make two of them so we've got three there and we've got three vacos there so now we can come in here and it will see a click to purchase this research so that's what we're gonna do this will now let us get into golems as well which is fantastic and to make this, we just need wood and a trap door. So we're going to, yeah, let's make one of them. 
So let's get some wood. Only need seven pieces. And then you need a trapdoor as well. And this takes quite a little on the wrist count as well. Uh, normally it'll take like a quite a fair bit more. Like with most other stuff. But this is only five, three and three. And we still don't even have enough. God damn it. Um, so we're just going to drop another node in here. and Nope. Ugh. Shit me, that's a good node. <laughs> there we go. Give us that order. Sorted. So, pop. We're insufficient on Pedicio. There we go, we had enough another one. We should just use that to start with. So, pull you out. Right, so... You can see this thing spitting stuff out all over the floor. He's given us extra little bits as well in the way of iron nuggets. But we don't really want to be standing here, do we? Collecting all of this. So what we're going to do, I'm not sure where the best place to put this is. But we'll stand and watch. This is a hungry chest. Basically, we'll pick up items thrown near it. Oh, is that it? It spat everything out. <laughs> That's like the worst timing ever. Right, so let's get ourselves up here. Let's get ourselves up iron and chuck that in there. Ah, no, I deleted it. Hang on, hang on, hang on. There we are, in it goes. I'm just going to show you the sped up process as well. So we're going to get some Ignis. And I don't think I've shown you watered jars yet, but I'm going to grab one anyway. We'll cover this in a future episode. Do not worry. Um, so as you can see, you can you can probably hear him as well, actually. There you are. There he is, munching it all up. And then you can put output to this and into a system somewhere or something if you want. So it's got to be within 10 blocks of the front face of it. So we're just going to pop this here and then we're going to put some Ignis in here. Apparently that should speed him up, but who knows. He doesn't take a lot out of it. There you are, it sped him up. He's took that little bit of Ignis. He doesn't take a lot, so he took that little bit there. I'm not sure how often he takes it. But if you have, like, you can have a golem just running Ignis here. It's quite fair and simple to get, really. And now this thing is going quite fast. It's spitting out all this stuff for us. You can put bellows on the side of him here. Uh, which we'll cover in another episode, I think. But you can put bellows on the side of them, which I think speed them up even more. But I'm not 100% sure on that. Like I've said before, um, a lot of this I'm learning with you guys. Uh, just so that it's you guys can sort of like... If I have watched a tutorial series and someone's done a whole playthrough of it before and they know exactly what they're talking about, you'll sometimes they'll sit there and they'll go on and on and then they'll just be like, you'll just be like, what? Whereas I'm not researching anything before I start this, just so there you, are, you saw that puff again. So it's like every minute or so, or 30 seconds, it'll take a bit, but it's not too bad. It's that's only if you want to speed it up. Uh, but yeah, I don't research any of this before. I sort of just do it on the whim. This is why we have the dispenser of knowledge. Makes our little research a little bit more random and a little bit more fun. Uh, I don't know what research we're going to do, be doing uh, every time that we do an episode, which just makes it that little bit more interesting for all of us. Uh, but so yeah, I don't research it because I want to be coming in, reading out of the book like you guys would be. And I want to be... I want you to... Uh, I want you guys to be able to see it from a point of view that you should be seeing it from, if that makes sense. Like, Direwolf, absolutely fantastic with his tutorials. I've learned a lot from him, but he goes quite technical, and sometimes I'm like, what? And i got to stop and rewind the video. I don't want you guys doing that here. I want you to be able to be on the same level as me when we're doing this research so we're both researching the same things both looking in the book in the same places and stuff like that 
Uh, so I'm going to do step by step like that as if I'm brand new to this as well. But I hope you guys have found this episode uh, educational. I hope you found it helpful. And I'm going to try and push on with these series a little bit more to try and help you guys out in the world of Thorncraft. Uh, so that when 4.2 comes out we can forget all of this Thorncraft basic stuff and we can jump straight into the new fun features coming in 4.2 which look absolutely amazing but thank you guys very much for watching like the video if you liked it subscribe if you want to see more tutorials or any other similar content and i will see you guys in the next episode see you later